Hello everyone and this lecture will discuss the time value of money. The items that we are going to cover in this lecture include discussing the difference between simple interest and compound interest. We're going to calculate the future value and the present value of a single amount and then we're finally going to calculate the future value and present value of an annuity. What is the time value of money? Well, it's an idea that money available at the present time is worth more than the same amount in the future due to its earning capacity. This principle of finance holds that provided money can earn interest, any amount of money is worth more the sooner you get it received to you. Our first um, discussion will be talking about simple interest versus the concept of compound interest. Now interest is the cost of borrowing money. Simple interest is interest you earn on the initial investment only you calculate it as the initial investment times the applicable interest rate times the period of the investment of the loan. So for example, let's say you put a thousand dollars into a savings account that pays simple interest of 10 percent and then you withdraw the money at the end of three years. Now this slide shows you that the amount of simple interest you would earn on your thousand dollars in each of the three years is one hundred dollars. With simple interest at ten percent annually, the thousand dollar initial investment generates one hundred dollars of interest each year and then it ultimately grows to thirteen hundred by the end of the third year. So each year you just receive interest on that initial investment. Well, compound interest works different. Compound interest is interest you earn on the initial investment and on previous interest. Because you're earning interest on interest, each period compounds interest yields increasingly larger amounts of interest earnings for each period of the investment unlike simple interest which only yielded that same one hundred dollars in each year on the example um, from the previous slide but you'll see in this slide it shows the calculations of compound interest for a thousand dollar three-year investment that earns ten percent now with compound interest at ten percent annually the thousand dollar initial investment grows to 1331 at the end of the three years. This compares to 1300 for the simple interest. Now that extra $31 is what's representing that compounding interest, interest earned on interest. Most all business applications utilize compounding interest. And compound interest is what we use in calculating what we're going to talk about in this chapter called the time value of money. It's important for you to note that simple interest is interest we earn only on the initial investment. Compound interest is the interest we earn on the initial investment plus previous interest. We use compound interest in calculating the time value of money. Now we're going to talk about the time value of a single amount. To better help you understand how compound interest affects the time value of money, we'll examine this topic from two different perspectives. First, we'll calculate how much an amount today will grow to be at some point in the future, which is called a future value. And then we'll take a, the opposite perspective and examine how much an amount in the future is worth today in its 
present value. So let's look at future value. In this example, we looked at previously in which we invested $1,000 for three years at 10%, compounded annually we call $1,331 the future value. So future value is how much an amount today will grow to be in the future. This timeline provides a really good way to help you visualize future values. Time, which we use as n equals zero, indicates today's day, the date of the initial investment. Note that at the end of each year, the investment grows by 10%. The future value at the end of the first year is $1,100, which is $1,000 times 1.10%, or the full value plus we add 10% onto that. Now after three years, the investment has a future value of $1,331, which is the $1,000 times 1.110 times 1.110 times 1.110, which represents a 10% growth on a growing base amount every year. To calculate future value, we can use a mathematical formula, time value of money tables, a calculator, or a computer spreadsheet. We'll view all four methods. This slide provides the formula where we can determine the future value of any amount with this formula. So the future value is going to be equal to the initial investment and then 1 plus the interest rate times the number of compounding periods. Now instead of using a formula, we can also determine the future value by using time value money tables. Table 1, which is located in the back of the book, is the future value of a dollar and it contains the future value of a dollar invested for a lot of different periods of time, which is N, and a lot of various different interest rates, which is I. With this table, it's really easy to determine the future value of any invested amount. To do so, you simply multiply the initial investment amount by the table value you find at the intersection of the column for the desired interest rate, and the row for the number of periods. Now the table shows various values of 1 plus i to the nth for different combinations of investment or interest in um, time. From this table you can find the future value factor for three periods where n is 3 and interest at 10 percent to be 1.33100. This means that one buck invested at 10% compounded annually will grow to $1,331, which is the 1 times 1.331 in three years. The table uses a dollar as the initial investment, whereas our example used $1,000 as an example. Now, we can use the table. Again, the future value is going to be our thousand dollars times that um, fair value, um, future value factor, the 1.33110 equals 1331. So that's how the table is used. Now, of course, you can do the same future value calculations by using a calculator. Future values are automatically stored in the memory of financial calculators. To compute a future value, you input three amounts, the initial investment interest rate per period and number of periods. This slide shows the inputs and output using a financial calculator. 
We can also use Excel as an option, which has automatically stored time value factors. Now I'm going to show you how to do this by utilizing Excel here. In Excel, I'm going to go over to the financial formula. I'm going to go to future value. The rate is 10%. So I'm going to put that rate in. This, excuse me. Let me fix that again. Future value. The rate is 10%. The number of periods, 3. There is no payment. We're not making continual payments. We'll talk about that in um, when we get to annuities. The present value is the $1,000 that we are going to place into this investment. And as you see, in doing so, the, um, the future value of the um, payments of $1,000 initial investment at a 10% interest rate for three years is $1,331. So it can also be done through um, the Excel. Okay, so as we move on here, um, in our previous example, interest was compounded annually only once per year. Remember that the N in the future value formula refers to the number of compounding periods, which isn't necessarily the number of years. So for example, suppose the three-year $1,000 investment earns 10% compounded semi-annually or twice a year. Now the number of periods over three years now would be six. And um, the interest rate per period would be 5%, not 10%. So the future value of a three-year $1,000 investment that earns 10% compounded semi-annually is shown here. We would see that we would go to 5% and we would go to six periods. Remember that's different than 10% and three periods because that interest is getting added to the initial investment twice a year. So at 5% compounding over six periods, we would use the factor 1.34010. So the $1,000 times the 1.34010 provides us with $1,340. That's where the number of periods is 6 and the interest is at 5. We could do the same on Excel real quick. I just want to show you this. We could make this interest rate now 5%. So I'm going to show future value where the rate is going to be at 5%. The number of periods is going to be 6. There is no payment. There is no payment that's going to be made. And as a result, Oh, our, the $1,000 is what we're going to be investing. And as a result, that number would come up to $1,340. So you can calculate this in a variety of methods. Let's look at an example. So um, <clears throat> here's Roberta, who currently owns stock in a company <clears throat> worth 800000 She wants to retire, but won't do so until her stock is worth at least a million dollars. Over the next three years, the company's stock is expected to grow 8% annually. Will Roberta be ready to retire in three years? So let's see what we think. So she wants 
a million dollars. Well, she expects it to grow 8% annually over three periods. So if we look at the 8% over three periods, we would use the factor 1.25971. We would show this 800,000 times 1.25971, which gives us $1,007,000 and 768. This time value factor came from this table 1, the future value of 1, excuse me, and where the number of periods equals 3, the interest equals 8. With an 8% 8 growth, Shirley is going to be ready to retire in 3 years. <coughs> Let's look at an example here. Four people below have the following investments. Determine which of the four people will have the greatest investment accumulation in six years. So here we see Jerry. Jerry's initial investment is 13000 The interest rate is 13%, but look, this is a really important. It's compounding quarterly. So in six years, quarterly is really 24 periods, isn't it? So the interest rate quarterly of um, six years would be 24 periods at 3% a period. So if you go to that table of 24 periods, at 3% a period, and we need to do that because it's compounding quarterly. We would locate that factor, and the future value would be 26,426.32. Elaine's investment of 16,000, her interest rate is 6%. Now that's compounding semi annually. So if you think about it, semi annually is twice a year which means over six years, that's 12 periods of invested at 3% each period. So you would go to the chart for 12 periods at 3% interest rate. That would give you 22,812. George, 23,000 invested, interest rate of 8% over six years. You would go to table one, but you would use the n equals six years, the i equals eight, and you would get thirty-six thousand four ninety-eight eleven cents. And then last, Kramer had nineteen thousand. The interest rate was ten percent, compounded annually, invested over six years, and as you can see there, the um, you would for the table you would find the um, n equals six, i equals ten, and that total would be thirty three thousand six fifty nine. So who is um, ultimately getting the most amount of money? Well, you can see there, George is getting the most amount of money, but he's also putting in the largest amount. Let's look at another one. You want to save for retirement. Assuming you are now 25 years old and you want to retire at age 55, you have 30 years to watch your investment grow. You decide to invest in the stock market, which has earned about 13% per year over the last 80 years, and you expect it to continue. So you decide to invest $2,000 today. What do you think you're going to have in 40 years? Well, with our initial investment of 2000 with the annual interest rate of 13% over a 30-year period, we would end up with a future value of $78,231.80. Again, I'm going to go and do this through Excel so you can understand with an amount of 2000 an interest rate of 13% for
fair value, the rate, 13%, the number of periods, 30, no payments, $2,000 we're putting in. I'm putting a minus just so the formula works correctly and ends up with a positive figure there. So as you see in doing so, um, Excel calculates the amount 78,231.80. Okay, now let's look at what the present value is. It's the opposite of the future value. Instead of telling us how much some amount today will grow to be in the future, present value tells us the value today of something of receiving some larger amount in the future. What is it worth today to receive $1,331 in three years? So to answer this, we need to determine the discount rate. So the discount rate is the rate at which we would be willing to give up dollars for current dollars for future dollars. If you'd be willing to give up $100 today to receive $108 in one year, then your discount rate or time value of money equals 8%. Continuing with the example, let's assume that your discount rate is 10%. In this case, the present value of receiving $1,331 in three years is a thousand bucks. We could have figured this from one of those previous slides similar to this by working backwards from the future value. Now the timeline in this slide depicts this relationship between present value and future value. To calculate present value, we can use a formula, the time value of money tables, and we could use a calculator, or we could use a computer spreadsheet, just like in calculating future values. To review the formula per, for present value, let's check out this slide. Present value is going to equal the future value divided by 1 plus interest to the nth degree. We could use Table 2 located in the back of your book. The preset value of a dollar, this slide, uh, excuse me, the present value of a dollar, this slide shows um, a slip, a piece of the table from the table you find the present value factor for three periods where n is 3 at 10%. And if you go there, you see that the that factor we're going to use is 0 0.75131. This means that a dollar received in three years where there is interest of 10% compounded annually is worth 75 cents today. So the present value of $1,331 in three years from now is $1,000 today. Now we can also use a calculator to determine this amount, as you see here. And we can also use the Excel table in order to figure out um, the present value. Let's complete an example here. Blue Builders lists uh, for sale a 3,000 square foot business building for 500,000. Someone offers to purchase the building, taking occupancy today, and then pay 575,000 in two years. If Blue's discount rate is 7% compounded annually, should it accept the customer's offer? Well, the present value of receiving 575000 in two years with an annual interest rate of 7% equals 502228 So we would take the 7% interest rate, we would do the number uh, two periods, 
we would use that factor of 0 0.87344 and we take our 575,000 we are planning to receive in the future to determine what that present value is. The present value of that amount is 502,228. Since that is greater than what we are hoping to receive of 500,000, I think we would want to go with um, that offer. So uh, Blue, my hope is, would accept that offer. A key point to remember is the future value of a single amount is how much that amount today will grow to be in the future. The present value of a single amount is the value today of receiving that amount in the future. Let's look at some more examples in determining the time value of money. So as you see here, um, Manuel is saving for a new car. He puts 10000 into an investment account today. He expects the account to earn 12% annually. How much will Manuel have in five years? The first thing you're going to look at is what type of chart or table do we use? Well, we're going to use table one, the future value of a single amount. So 10,000, we would go to the chart of 12% um, for a period of five years, and we would find that factor 1.76234, where N is 5, I is 12. That amount in five years is 17,600 and twenty three dollars. Here's another one. Ingrid would like to take her family to Disney World in three years. She expects the trip to cost forty five hundred at that time. If she can earn nine percent annually, how much should she set aside today so she can pay for the trip in three years? Well, 4500 we will again go to table one and where we see N, oh, excuse me, we're going to go the opposite. She expects that trip to cost 4500 in the future. So we need to figure out how much she needs to invest today. So we're going to go to table two. Table two lets us see the present value of a future amount. So we will take 9%, 3 years, where N is 3, I is 9, the factor will be 0 0.77218 to know that she needs to invest $3,475 today in order to have that money in the future. Here's one more. Anna purchases a ring with a selling price of 4000 today but she doesn't have to pay cash until one year from the purchase date. Assuming a discount rate of 16% compounded quarterly, what is Anna's actual cost of the ring today? So she has to pay that $4,000 in one year from now. But what is that really worth to her today? Well, it's one year, but it's going to be compounding quarterly at a rate of 16%, which means the periods are done quarterly, which is four times a year, one year, four times a year. Number of periods is four. The interest rate is 4% because we calculate the interest based on the periods. Now, whenever we have a problem, that gives us the annual interest rate, and it's our job to um, determine what that interest amount is 
per quarter when we go and draw those numbers from the tables. So in taking that number from table 2, 4,000 in the future, the factor is going to be table 2, the present value of a future amount. 0 0.85480 means today that 4,000 is worth $3,400 and nineteen dollars.